I work for the Bureau of Investigative Journalism's Covert Drone War Project, um, and this is a sort of marrying of two disciplines, investigative journalism and casualty recording. And as a part of that combining of disciplines, we've come up with the Naming the Dead Project, which is a very specific effort to identify the people who've been killed in CIA drone strikes in Pakistan. The CIA has been carrying out these attacks um, to a greater or lesser degree of frequency since 2004 and we've recorded 414 strikes to date, I think, um, which have killed at least 2,400 people. So far we've identified about 700 of them, so you can see there's a huge number of people who are unidentified. Um, of that 2,400, about 400 minimum are civilians. To me, uh, drones have changed warfare and, and possibly our future. And I think that it's very important that uh, people know and understand the consequences of the very dangerous uh, standard that the U.S. is setting with the CIA's use of drones. Um, killing lots of people um, outside of declared war zones with no accountability uh, is a very, very dangerous thing uh, to do, especially when you think about the, the very rapid spread of this technology. When we started this production, uh, just a handful of countries had military drones. Today, close to 100 countries either have or are working on developing military uh, drone technology. Maybe an interesting area is almost like using Facebook and Twitter, Flickr, Instagram in some cases, Google Maps, the satellite imagery, and the amount of knowledge you can gain from this is really, really interesting, actually. Um, there's a lot of discourse in the, uh, if you want to call it the you know, so-called new media art world, about Facebook um, and surveillance, but actually the people in, you know, in, on air bases that have a Facebook profile set up for that air base, they inadvertently release maybe information in the background of a photo. You might see a drone and that. I think, I think certainly a number of years ago, maybe five years ago, that, that photo might have been you know, a big news story in a way. It could have been like, well, you know, there's supposed to be no drones at this airbase, but here we are in the background. The military's decisions is untouchable by democracy, it seems. And so the acceleration of that seems to be getting much faster than people being able to psychologically deal with the impact of what that is. Just like this event where people are asked to come to take part in acknowledging the complexity of drones, and, uh, and the ubiquity of how drones are affecting different aspects of our lives because there's some positive kinds of uh, influences, you know, and uh, where you're using drones to find people in earthquakes and other things like that, and delivery services. But there's a darker side which is growing, and it's a little bit like uh, Oscar Wilde's uh, idea, Picture of Dorian Gray. The responsibility of the pilot himself is there, but from my point of view, it's more important to focus on the responsibility of the commanders, of those who gave the orders, of those who planned the unlawful operation. But of course, also the, the, the pilot, the individual soldier who shoots, um, if he realizes, she realizes uh, that uh, the order he, she received was unlawful, has uh, an obligation to disobey the order. I 
guess what my entire intended purpose behind what I'm doing is to just get people aware and to get people to think. And what I would like people to do is to get them to understand what their interaction with the world really does mean. We, we might not be looking for a, a savior or a knight in shining armor to come save us, or maybe that is what we're looking for, but we have to also realize is that the only person that's gonna save us is ourselves. What we have to do is realize is if we are going to stop conflict, if we are going to see everyone else as human beings, we have to willingly look at people and, and be compassionate and gentle and kind. And it, do, it doesn't mean being weak. In fact, actually, it's, it's a matter of, that, that is a matter of strength. Is like when you don't feel like you can be that towards another person and you do it, that is true strength. That is true courage. And we can't be afraid anymore. There's no reason to be afraid anymore. There's a reason to be angry. There's always a reason to be angry, especially at the people that are perpetuating these, these types of war, these types of conflicts. There, there's the ones that are the, the politicians and the media moguls who are out there saying, we must fear these people, we must attack these people, we must kill these people. But they're, they're only doing it because they want you to be afraid of people. And these people are human beings just like you. We have to understand that they're probably afraid of us as well. So there is no reason to fear another human being. And I hope that people realize that and understand that and so we can take this journey towards a more peaceful future. Thank you.